Here's Wilson, and on the right side, he Hello, welcome once again to the Power Play Point podcast. This is your host, the Blue Liner on Point, talking at you live from the digs at Glen Burnie, Maryland. And uh, so it's another week of Caps Hockey Talk, uh, and it's a good one for once. Well, not for once, but uh, a good one as opposed to the last several weeks. So glad you could join us, uh, you from uh, the... District of Columbia, State of Maryland, and, of course, the Commonwealth of Virginia. Oh, the Commonwealth. Uh, But we won't get into that. Speaking of the Commonwealth, though, uh, a jewel of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, You know her, as I like to call her, the mermaid memeing mentalist, the Fairfax's finest teaching prodigy. If you're lucky enough to have a child taught by her, it is a treat. She, of course, is the beautiful, wonderful Anna Knox. Happy Tuesday, Gil. Yes, I, I feel like we, we haven't done a Tuesday show in a while. No, no. Yeah, we okay. uh, tried, tried to get it together. We usually record Mondays is the new schedule. Tried to get it together. just wasn't happening. So I uh, pushed it for today. Weather was a tad bit more cooperative, allowing me to travel. Um, so uh, we're doing it now. So it's, uh, yeah, it's Tuesday February the 12th. Happy Lincoln's birthday to those of you who are into that sort of thing. Uh, and we're uh, recording. Hold on, a- hold on, hold on. Who, who would be into that? Oh, his, history buffs like myself. Okay, well, I mean, we all admire Lincoln as a president, but do we really, you know, I, I don't know. His birthday. Oh, it's we made the we made a monument to the guy for crying out loud. That's what I'm I mean, saying. But that it, but I mean when you're like making it sound you know of he's course one of the, he's one of the four presidents that do the lap at the Nats games for, for uh, that's years. true. That's I true. mean who wouldn't that be in beard? It? Yeah. All right. I'll Locking let it go. The, no mustache beard. Yeah. Who wouldn't uh, be? In very it? few people can do that. So yeah. Yeah, Miguel, please come playoffs. Don't don't go for that look. Don't go for what look? The Lincoln look. Uh, well, no, I can't, I well, can't promise. I can't promise anything, but uh, you might have given my cousin uh, Reverend G. Redliner a, 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 oh, a, a fuck my life. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either that or I guess it's it's the lesser of two evils is that the Lincoln beard or the porn stash. So, and, okay. and the, the only person that can pull off the porn stash is Tommy. So you got yeah. some pretty big competition. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. see. All we'll, right. We'll see. We'll see. Anywho. So how are you doing? Any. Uh, better, better. Uh, yeah, just, uh, just want to throw out a quick apology there. Uh, work life, et cetera, et cetera. got, uh, way too much in the way last week. So, uh, hence we had no show last week. Um, had a few issues to deal with at work that have uh, left me uh, a, a, a bit uh, bitter and PO'd at my job. Um, you want more details, um, you can uh, private message me um, at the Facebook room um, or personally. But uh, yeah, won't won't get into that. But basically, it was, it was that that uh, caused us to not have a, a, a show last week because I just didn't feel properly prepared, nor did I feel like I had, I was even barely 75% due to the, all of the efforts I had to put in because of all that. And so Mm -hmm. I didn't feel it was fair to try to do a show as emotionally impaired, uh, you know, not that that's an excuse, but you know, that's basically what I was. So I figured F it, you know, just we'll save it for next week. So. Yeah, that's good. You know, when your mojo's not there, it's not there. And yeah. and 
and that was all good. Yeah, this uh, last week has been it's been good. It's been busy. God, I'm like it's only Tuesday, Anna. It's only Tuesday, <laughs> but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get through this. And I feel um. God, yeah, I feel so much better. Like I was kind of going into that Kings game last night a little, a little concerned, but I felt really good about it. So I know that we will definitely talk about last night's game later on. And you wanted to go ahead and and kind of uh, recap. Yeah. The okay. So the yes. Home. The, right. So so the six game home stand is over and done with. Um, and as I said, as we record this, it is February twelfth. Uh, around 5.30 ish Eastern time, as we're speaking to you now, you on the other side of the earbuds, the speakers, what have you. Uh, and of course, tonight they have, they start a uh, road swing in Columbus, Ohio, um, and several other games out in uh, good old uh, Cali, California. Here we come. And, um, but there was the six game home stand before that. So we're going to zip through those six games. Obviously, it's going to be long if we do it the normally normal way that we do it. So we're going to zip through these Jacob Vrana style with speed. That's my boy. So, Who has been uh, kicking ass lately. Oh, yes. More on that later. Um, okay, so we're going to start with the game against the Calgary Flames. Um, this was, uh, wow, this was, uh, uh, quite a while ago, uh, late last week, I think it was. Um, okay. So we're going to do, we're going to do, uh, uh, just, uh, one or two quick highlights from the game. Uh, okay. So it was last Friday, no, two Fridays ago. Uh, this was Nick Dowd opened the scoring. Uh, but the, the highlights, as far as I was concerned was, um, well, the Caps' second goal that put them up 2-1 before the end of the first period. Uh, great play by one of your favorites, uh, D- Dimitri. Um, what's his number? 23? Yes. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. So so he was nosing around the net uh, and, and looking for the puck and looking for the puck and um, didn't quite get, get the assist that he wanted uh, from his teammates, but he found the rebound and put away the backhand, making it 2-1. So clearly, this was a case of Yashkin, you shall receive. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be here all month. Uh, look, yes. Yes, and so and speaking later... Of, speaking of which, when just because you said that, that ugh, pun, uh, did you see the, I think it was Monumental Sports, put out something on Instagram with... Um, uh, Valentine's Day cards with with making puns of the, some of the players like I'll check you out or I'm I'm checking you out like check like Czech Republic for Verona right and then there's a I'm just jasking for you to be my Valentine <laughs> see, I need that's, laugh not where that. I, that's, that's not where I got it from yeah but, but see that I, like but the only thing I thought of that whole time is like my god if Gil ever leaves his job this is what he needs to do you need yeah. to get into like the cheesy uh, magnets, bumper stickers, mugs, puns, whatever, because because that's you. I'm telling you. But yeah, I mean, if that's to be had, then the, yeah, I'll, I'll dive into that. But neither neither here nor there. Um, right. So, uh, OK, so that was a main highlight the other one of course being um it was an up and down game but uh evgeny kuznetsov gets his 10th of the year on the power play puts away the snapshot to make it 4-3 with less than a minute to go and wins the game does the bird dance and the walk off etc etc game number one in the books is a win uh, second game well nothing to heat <laughs> nothing to see here because there was nothing to score here as they were shut up by the boston bruins and uh That's a brutal Rast. game brutal brutal game um yeah to watch uh but uh gotta give credit where credit is due tuka rask stood on his head for the majority of his game stopped uh, all of the shots that went his way, all 24 shots by the Caps. Uh, great performance by him. Um, uh, just abysmal, other than the physical uh, the physical uh, uh, aspect of the game was the only place where uh, the Caps really showed any life. But uh, that did you, did you watch the game? 
I can't remember. I I watched I watched about as much of it as I could. I don't yeah. I didn't see it till the very end. I, I got through maybe halfway through the the third period, and it was getting late, and it just it just looked like they had run out of gas at that point. And, I don't know what happened, away. but um, and because usually you know I'm all like fucking Marshawn and and kind of crazy, but I will tell you, Chara was on my shit list during this during this game. Um, but I will say, you know, if you had to ask me one of the coolest names ever in a sport, Tukarask. Of course. Look, you know, Pecorini, he's good too, but Tukarask, he just, I, I've ne- I would never say this because, um, you know, I recall asking you um, when you told me that your cat's name is BJ and I said, why BJ? And you said, because he looks like a BJ. And I said, how does someone look like a BJ? Um, I will take that and say, this guy looks like a Tuca. I love him. Okay. And you I'll, know what? Hats, hats off to that. him. Yeah. All yeah. Right. I, you know, I, like I said, credit where credit's due. He came up big when he had to. And that that's yeah. that's really the story of the game. And uh, you must have uh, some sort of magical cat charms because as soon as you had said his name, um, BJ Oshi did, did, uh, make a dash for, uh, my leg just now. And, uh, now he's running around our coffee table. So, BJ. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so he's, he's making like his namesake now with his, with his favorite toy. Good times. So, uh, but that, yeah, good times. Uh, so moving on to the next, the third game in the homestand, uh, that against, uh, Vancouver. Uh, so Canucks, that was a three, two win. So the highlight main, uh, mainly in that game, uh, Jacob Vrana with the game-winning goal. Um, and uh, so unfortunately, they came up short as far as the pizza effort. But uh, I do know a decent Chinese place where you can get a pretty good poo-poo platter. But at least the Caps came away with the win there. Moving on to the fourth game in the uh, series. Wait, no mention, no mention of Beaks. Uh, Come oh, on. Well, yeah, yeah. I okay. I mea culpa. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that that was of course Jay Beagle's homecoming game, um, and of course there was the nice tribute video and the and the and the handshake and hug at center ice with the captain and and all that. I, I didn't mean to gloss that over, but you know you had to know that was coming, and that's that's really. I mean, for most most folks, pardon me. Um, that was. Pardon me. I uh, got the energy drink backing up on me. Um, the reason for seeing the game because you know, Vancouver, eh, they're doing okay, but they're not. They're not. Uh, they're not real close to a playoff spot. So uh, most thought this would be a walkover game, which, as it turned out, it wasn't. But uh, yeah, no, that was that was very nice to have uh, Beegs come in and and get his tribute video and get his uh, get his dedication and all that. So. Uh, that's uh, that that was pretty good to see. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Of course, that's why you pay me the big bucks. Yeah, <laughs> big bucks, uh, if only. <laughs> um, okay, so the fourth game in the homestand was against Colorado, and we have a Burakovsky sighting. He opened the scoring with his seventh. Uh, and uh, Kuznetsov uh, had his awakening as well. He got two goals in this game, uh, including the game winner. And uh, I know what you're thinking, Anna. No, I have not forgotten about the other thing that happened in this game. In fact, I'm going to take a pause for the cause here and make it the controversial statement of this episode. Yes, of course, what I'm talking about is the Tom Tommy. Wilson beatdown of one uh, Ian Cole. Cole, oh. not 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 Ian Knox, Ian Cole. <laughs> right, um, that would and, be weird because I'd be like, and, "Who am I? What side am I on?" Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, uh, you know what? Go ahead, make your controversial statement because well, I may shock you. I I am going to say that uh, this fight never should have happened, um, and not because Tom Wilson did a bad thing. No, he did the right thing. He did what he had to do. You know why he did what he had to do? Because the NHL, including its on-ice officials, does not do their job in penalizing these reckless hits. Unless, of course, it's Tom Wilson doing them. 
Yeah, Agreed. I'm still on. I'm still on that bandwagon, people, and I'm not getting off. So deal. Anyway, if they police this kind of a thing properly, which they claim at the top of their lungs they're willing to do and should be doing, just to avoid the con, uh, the obligatory concussion lawsuits that are coming their way. Um, this kind of a thing wouldn't be allowed to stand. But of course, there was no call on the play. None whatsoever, at least as far as I can I can see. Uh, I going to double check that now. Yeah, there wasn't. Because- and 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 uh, yeah, it is. It's so it's just beyond. I don't I know, I, understand. I, I, I tell lack. a lie. I t- I tell a lie. Uh, I'm looking at the penalty summary, and he was indeed called for interference. Um, what, but, so two minutes? Uh, yeah, but that, that so. was it. That, that was it. Two minutes. No, no. Oh, we've got to review this. We've got to uh, crack down right. on this. No. Well, and, and it's also, it's two minutes for a completely inappropriate and, and, you know, reckless hit on a player who's coming back from a concussion. You know what? Right. So fuck off, Cole. I mean, what the hell? So that that just got me riled up. And I have seen the social media and all the angles of the fight. I mean, we can only see the fight so many times. Um, and you know what? I, I will say, I, I kind of was hoping Tommy could restrain a little bit and maybe stop about five punches before... He did. (laughs) Um, Or, you know, or you're thinking maybe the refs may intervene because I think this guy's out. Isn't Cole out indefinitely now? That I I didn't hear. I the last I heard, I heard he had to miss the practice. The next practice they had because of because of the injuries from the fight. But, uh, you know, from said beat down. Uh, right. But no, I think I think he might be out indefinitely, and that could just be because right. Um, and, and I I just want to jump in here, not not to yeah. cut you off, but I, I want to make sure of something here. We're not celebrating these injuries, okay? No, the only no. reason, the only freaking reason I'm mentioning this is because it never should have happened in the first place. Agreed. Because if the if the refs had done their jobs to begin with in policing this game. None of that would have ever happened. None of it at all. But since I agree. The reps are some in some sort of, I don't know, they got goof gas sprayed on them or something. I, I don't know what they did. Profound, well, profound in their depths of suckitude this year for some strange reason. More on that later. Right. Um, but I, I, again, it's, it, it's, 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 it, brings up just the oh my god like just that frustration of when you when you watch the the highlight if you watch it from i don't care what angle the hit on koozie there is somebody right there like he saw it and nothing was done you better believe if that was wilson he'd be out for the rest of the season you know, so that so these yeah. inconsistencies are absolutely killing me. So, yeah, I'm just kind of shaking my head on this one. Yeah, no, I yeah, I'm I'm with you there. I am totally with you there, and that yeah, it just ugh, I I I don't know, I don't know. But if you thought that was if you thought that officiating was bad, ho ho, wait till the next game uh, against the FLA. Uh, that being the Panthers, and unfortunately, that was an overtime loss. But one of the calls in this game, holy hell, what was this guy thinking? I'm talking about the one at 1635 of the first, where Christian Juice was called for elbowing against Colton Sevier. Right. Sevier ran into the butt end of Juice's stick. Right. How in the hell, how in the blue hell is that elbowing? You tell me. Oh, somebody, I, somebody tell me. I don't know. When when I watch the games, and, and you know that we're such huge, you know, Ben and Adi and, and Locker and Alan May, Rob Carlson fans, like, you know, going to listen to them. Um, don't even get me started on Mike Milbury. Um, but 
when you hear them get fired up about something and then even so many minutes later, Alan May's not dropping it and Locker's not dropping it. You know, it was a shitty call. You know, it was so fucking, and, and of all players, like if this was a physical guy, like if this was a Marshawn or, you know, and, and I can't even think of, an, or, or, or Orloff, you know, someone that you're like, oh yeah, I could totally see, you know, him being an asshole and, and doing something. Um, but Christian Juice, I mean, come on, he's been out for like 25 games. <laughs> he's not a fighter. He's not that guy. He's got crazy skills. I'm glad, I'm glad he's healthy and, and back with us because he's he's done really well recently. But are you freaking kidding me? I mean, this is like it was just so this again, it's I, if I was Todd Reardon, I'm like, I don't even there's nothing you can do except just shake your head and say, what the fuck? And I think that was that blew up all over our the Power Play Point podcast Facebook page of people just being like, are you, are you kidding me? Did, what? How does somebody run into someone's like, how does that even happen? So, yeah, that was just such such a bullshit call. So and, and, and one. So one thing there for the for the record, the referee's name who called that is Brad Watson. And you're right. All four members of the NBCSN Washington broadcast crew to a man all had a snarky comment about that call. So yes, you're right. It, it, it was so obviously bad that they had, they felt forced to say something. And it, I don't know. Do they, do they train refs to not watch hockey anymore? Because it was nowhere near an elbowing. It wasn't even butt ending. If you, if you even look at that way, Juice was against the wall, balancing himself, and reached back with his stick to try and corral the puck. Anybody with eyes can see that that is what was taking place, except right. for Brad Watson. And I right. just and I just have to wonder out loud, how much further do we have to go through the bottom of, as I said, suckitude? for the quality of officiating for what we have been saying is the world's greatest team sport. Right. How much well, more I, do you have to go? I would say at this point, I'm completely convinced that these guys were all reinstated uh, to be refs when they were let go from the NFL a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's like they made you know, what was, that was a good, what, five, six, seven years ago, whatever it was when, when everyone's like, you, you have to be kidding me. And then all of a sudden, you know, there was this big uproar and everyone, you know, like, even if, you, when you had a replay, it's like, come on, you cannot do stuff like this. And then all of a sudden we've had this season, like from the beginning. And I remember in the beginning, you can you didn't, you didn't come to their defense. I won't say that, but you did mention like, listen, you know, some of them are new and they're just kind of, or newer, or they've been, you know, off on a break or something like that. that oh, I, I have pole vaulted. I have since pole vaulted over giving the, these idiots the benefit of the doubt. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like, so we're talking, you know, 40 games ago, you know, it was like, hey, all right, well, it's first game and bad calls, but, you know, let's shake off the rust kind of thing and, and move forward. Uh, now completely unacceptable. I mean, completely unacceptable. So who knows what's going to happen? I know I haven't looked to see who's, um, who's on the ice tonight, but oh, yeah. fuck it. Come well, on. So, so, so a good, so it, it, good that you mentioned that. So if you're ever curious about that, two sources who are pretty good about reporting, uh, who the refs are, uh, for, uh, well, caps games, and in and, and games in general, anyway, uh, Ed Frankovic on Twitter uh, usually puts out a tweet as, as far as who the refs are for Caps games and uh, scouting the refs on Twitter. Uh, they put out um, the refs names for every game as well. So those are two good sources in case you're interested in something like that. Right. Um, but uh, so we're going to. Uh, OK, so let's finish out the highlights and lowlights uh, of uh, this game against the Panthers. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I think we I think we're good. 
<laughs> well, there, there's one one more couple of quick things I wanted to mention. Uh, Burkowski uh, came out, ha- had uh, one of his recent strong games here. Okay. Uh, so I, I did want to mention that because uh, he is uh, slowly but surely um, right proving proving his worth, uh, as it were. I think he had two assists in this game. That's just it. I mean, uh, let, let's just let's I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sort of. Uh, at what point as a coach, as a, as a GM, do you look at a player and say, um, too little, too late? Good he's, question. Uh, he, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. I'm just, just like, I've, you know, I watch all the Caps games. I may have a hell of a time when they're playing at 1030 on the, on the, on the West coast, but I will suck it up somehow. And anyways, so when you're watching and you go through the series of games and he's not doing shit and he's just not up to his potential and, you know, we're, we're 30 plus games in and he's got, you know, five points. Then all of a sudden all this trade buzz is going around and you see him score, you know, the last, what, two games or he's, he's scored and, and he looks damn good. But it's what point is it too little too late that, you know, you, you, floated by with maybe 65, 70% effort. And now, now you're kind of shitting bricks a little bit because it's like, oh, hey, you know, we, we could let you go very easily. And all of a sudden he turns it on and now he looks good. And now people are like, well, do we want to mix up the lines? Everyone's so comfortable, the Stanley Cup champion team and, and on and on. But you can't fucking earn that spot. And right now I like, I don't know how, I don't know if Reardon's going to say, okay, because I know, I know the deadline's coming up, but you know, are, are we going to sit back as, um, you know, if we like we may like we you and I matter on a panel of who's getting traded. But hypothetically, um, are we looking at the situation saying, OK, let's see how he does on the road. Like, how, how is he going to be right. against um, CBJ tonight? You've got, you know, the Sharks. I mean, you've got Ducks. What I mean, you, there's a whole slew of games that are coming up in the next two weeks on the road that are going to be tough. Like, I don't take any of these other teams for granted at, at this point anymore. Um, but is that it? Like, hey, you do something in the next three games and we'll keep you. Or, you know, hey, happy trails or <laughs> good luck doing something else. Uh, yeah, true. Very true. And uh, it is something to consider. And yes, we have not talked about it as much here um, on the uh, Power Play Point podcast, because uh, frankly, I mean, I, I've put well, I've put my thoughts out there in that. Um, I think what we should go for if uh, inclined to deal him is to go for. And uh, this is going to make somebody sick to their stomach, I know, but uh, is to go for um, high to mid round draft picks uh, because uh, sooner or later the cupboard is going to be bare, uh, right. whether we like to fathom that or not. Um, a lot of these guys, uh, yeah, they're young, but uh, a lot more of these guys aren't getting any younger either. So, so that's something to consider, I would think. So, if you can get a second or third rounder, uh, you can talk a team into doing that, uh, plus a face-off specialist, which uh, I believe uh, the last show, uh, Chris Levesque uh, suggested Brian Boyle. Well, uh, that ship has sailed, unfortunately. Uh, he um, got snatched up. Oh, my God. He got snatched up. Yes, he, yes, he sure did. So that's out of the picture now. But, I mean, if, if you're so inclined to deal him, that's what you go for is, is one of those two things, or if you can have it, both of those two things. Um, so, but, but I don't know. I don't know if he can contribute though, if he's in a position where he can contribute and, uh, and, and be comfortable where he is and be more consistent, then maybe you want to, maybe you want to keep him. Right. Um, no. And, and I've always been, about keeping the team together. I know I was one in the beginning when they said, Oh, Todd Reardon, you know, assistant, I don't, I don't have, I don't know how much faith I have in him. And I thought, you know, I'm going to give the guy a chance because, you know, he was with the team, whether assistant coach or not, he was still there. So they weren't changing too many things going into this 2018, 2019 season. But unfortunately, 65 and nine are absolutely on my shit list. 
Um, and I know we can't do anything about nine, but I'm done with Orlov. I'm done. I don't know what he could do to make me turn around and, and like, I don't know, wear his jersey or something. Um, but he's, yeah, he's not doing it for me. Barakowski, be consistent. Be consistent and and we're, we got your back. You know, like we want you in that, what is he like? It Was he on the, the Alor Connolly line? Yeah, it looks like yeah. looks like that's 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 where he is now. So I I think he might have found some some comfort yeah. there finally, and uh, uh, it it, it really said. showed because that line that line in the in the Florida game they were responsible for one two three goals yeah. out of the four that they scored right. So so you know I I think. You know, maybe I don't know. I, I'm of two minds. I I would not be surprised nor dismayed if they ended up deciding to keep him. But if you keep him, do not sign him to anything more than say a one or two year contract. Agreed. That's that's my that's my uh, that's my take. Uh, oh boy! Uh, breaking news! Breaking news! Uh, I just got a little blurb on my app that said. Evgeny Malkin has been suspended for a game for a high stick incident against Michael Ruffle, 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 of the Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, shit. So uh, our, uh, our, friend, mm. our friend and Carrie, uh, our friend Carrie uh, from Philly will be interested in, in hearing about that. But yeah, <laughs> finally, well, no, this is something, this is good because finally Malkin has something on his record. Uh, I Instead agree. Of, Instead of, oh, he did this, he served this penalty, he paid this yeah. fine, he blew this guy, whatever. But now he's got something on his record. Go so ahead. now you can't say, now you can't say, well, he's never done this before officially. Yes, he has. And now it's on his record. Good. I hate okay. That guy. Yeah. So uh, I knew you'd like that. So when, uh, as soon as I saw that, I had to throw that sweet. in there. Sweet. All one right. last thing. One last thing I will throw in from the uh, uh, the Florida game. Uh, the, yeah. the scoring was opened by, uh, I guess you would call it. Well, I would call it uh, something uh, of a, a modern version of the uh, mafia line. Uh, Frankie Vetrano. He gets his uh, 18th of the year, and uh, Vinny Trocek. Uh, he's the guy that assisted him. Eh? So. Uh, there's that. Now I refer quick little history lesson here. There was such a thing as a mafia line. It was in the seventies. It was Phil Esposito who was the Godfather, and he had two Dons, Don Maloney and Don Murdoch. So yes, that was a thing. Just want to throw that out there. I haven't forgotten my hockey history. Okay. Oh, ye fans of that. So now we come to the final game of the six game homestand. That's the, of course, that was last night's game. Um, this was probably, I want to call this the Rebel Yell of the six games. Um, Rebel Yell, if you're as old as I am, uh, was a famous roller coaster. You should know, uh, no, or you wouldn't know this. You haven't been in Virginia all that long. Um, no, but I was thinking Rebel Yell, like Billy Idol, and I was no. on board. But... Yeah, well, it could, could be that too, but uh, Rebel okay. Yell was uh, uh, the famous roller coaster at the King's Dominion theme park. Yeah, um, no, not my thing. So, yeah, uh, this was an up-and-down game. 2-2 at the end of the first. Captain opens the scoring with his 38th, league-leading 38th. Um, and let's see, Andre Berthakovsky. Uh, Andre, it was his birthday. I, Ber, Berth, Stop. He was... He he turned a year older that day, and he and he go. celebrated with uh, with uh, another assist uh, yeah. and a pretty strong game, if I have to say. I agree. Uh, so yeah, uh, still, you know, like we said, if 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 he's kept after the deadline, wouldn't surprise me because if he keeps on being this consistent and this good, I don't see why they would get rid of him, uh, unless it's an offer they can't refuse. Stop! Stop! Sorry, sorry, I did, still can't get rid of the, the mafia thing. Um, but yeah, this was an up and down game. As I said, uh, the lead changed hands a couple times and, uh, yeah, it looked like the Kings were going to walk away with it. And then caps came alive, uh, late in the second, uh, with, uh, juice with his one hander and, uh, Jacob Verana with his second game winner. Of can we, can we just man. talk about that juice goal though? I mean, I know you had that that 
pun. You like the fact that he did uh, he did it one handed? No, I, th- I think my response was um, <laughs> minding gutter. Anyways, uh, that was phenomenal. That to me was like, fuck yeah, welcome back. Uh, and Ronna, I mean, man, but I, I will say, I mean, we, we talked about, we, I know you haven't finished through the, through the LA game, but I will, I think we need to just acknowledge the fact of, um, how, when we did our round table call and every, and one of the questions was about a player who we feel isn't living up or living up to their potential, um, you know, performing as well as we think you recall this yeah yeah okay but i i I mean i'm i I don't i can't remember the question because i I think i might have muted well i think having the the ice cream incident i think the i think the the question was who has been the most disappointing player right to this and we had i believe christian and i don't know about lisa possibly but i believe koozie's name was thrown out there and yes. I didn't answer the question because, yeah, I think I was I was dealing with that ice cream issue. And and then I and I was pretty much like if I was asked the question, too, I definitely would have said that. And I am so glad that we talked about it, because after All Stars, he has been back to the player that we needed, you know, from from day one. And I think we all had concerns when he was out and injured that he wasn't coming back 100 percent. Definitely myself included. I had such, I told you, Oshi and Kuzi to me just never looked the same after they came back. Um, but what we saw last night with, with 92 was a, a player who was out there with, with the skills that we all know and love, with the speed that we all know and love. And I will say what I love about him is that when he is playing, and yes, he's intense, but when he's out there and he's having a good time, the whole team relaxes, you know, and, and that's what I feel like we, we just need to get back to enjoying the game of hockey and not trying so hard because then we make these stupid fancy passes that blow up in our face and we've got hooking penalties that are killing us. Um, so go back to that. Hey, listen, Stanley cup champions, you know, we, we can do it, but let's go out for the love of the game and, and relax a little bit. And I think once, you know, he's out there and, and he's amped up, cause I feel like a lot of the pressure, not even the pressure, but a lot of the players like to Ovechkin for kind of his vibe. I think Kuzi has something to add, you know, to these players too, to say, listen, I'm out there, I'm having fun. I've got my Sally dance. And I'm good to go. And he has been fucking awesome these last couple of games. So really, like, he's sort of, he's teacher Pat this week. Well, okay. So, yeah, I was, uh, well, that, it's good that you mentioned the the hooking and holding penalties. I'll get to that in a second. But, yeah, I think uh, last week, because we had the round table, we missed uh, your, your uh, teacher pet of the week uh, feature. So uh, glad you uh, brought that back. Um, so yes, definitely K- Kuznetsov would fit that bill. But I just wanted to point out, which just want to run with uh, the the penalty thing a little bit more here. I'm looking over the penalty summary. The first, well, it, well, there. Okay, so there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven penalties in total called. The first six of them were either hooking or holding. So you had the LA Kings with the first two. They were uh, one was hooking, one was holding. Then it was hooking, hooking, hooking. All three against the Caps and holding against the Kings. I, I don't know. So what? What the heck was going on here? I was. Are we on K right, Street but, or what? <laughs> but <laughs> nice. Um, look, I gave you accolades for that one. That was good. Thank you. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning in my old age. <laughs> um, uh, what was it? The uh, not Calgary. No, I think it was the Vancouver game. One of the what I want to say Vancouver, but totally correct me. There was a game in which Reardon put his foot down when it came to hooking, and it was it was uh, Kuzi and Yaskin, I believe, that had to sit out. Um, 
yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. I just, yeah. I just can't remember what game it was. Right, and so, so that I, I thought, okay, I'm joking, and you know, people think, oh, it, you know, it's, it's going to be the like the the newbie players, the the Yaskins and and whatever. Uh, but he sat down to vet, and hats off to Reardon to say, listen, you're not, you know, untouchable you can't be making stupid calls like this. And, you know, Brett Connolly making a penalty at the end of that Panthers game, that kind of blew it for us. And, oh, she's been in the sin bin, that kind of stuff. So when he's like, I'm not tolerating hooking, good for him. But I kind of wish he would have, I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe he's going to crack down tonight. Um, but it's just, it's just so not necessary. It's so not necessary. It's, and, and I kind of make it like the equivalent to a face mask, a uh, 15 yard penalty in, in, in the NFL. It's like, you know, you're not supposed to do that. And you know, they're going to catch you right away. And you know, you're going to fuck it up for your team. So don't do it. Don't grab the face mask. Don't hook. And, you know, and then it's like, and it's not ever just like a sly maneuver. You've got, you know, Ovechkin like you know, slapping the shins and hooking. It's like, you know, there's an aggression there. So yeah, you're going to get called out on that. And that, you know, for the amount of times that the refs has missed a bunch of calls, this seems to be the one thing that they're targeting this, this season. So quit fucking doing it, you know? So yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah see. And I thought, I, I thought I heard Locker say something during the game that the, the caps actually lead the league in hooking and holding penalties. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Pretty that's, sure. That's, pretty sure he said in all seriousness he did say that. So yeah, I heard yeah, it last you, night. You got mm-hmm. you got something there. So yeah, they they need to cut down on that for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, as you said though, Kuzi uh, was probably well, not probably, uh, most likely the best player uh, in this homestand. Really came alive. But uh, to segue into what I hope is something of a regular feature here on the Triple P podcast. Uh, we're going to highlight, of course, you, the fan. And, of course, we have our Facebook page. We have something of a game thread for every game, uh, whether uh, it's uh, both Anna and myself that run it or just Anna on some nights. Uh, as, uh, yeah, sometimes I just, the, the Zs get the better of me. Um, <sighs> so, uh, yeah, from last night, we're going to focus on uh, a guy uh, we haven't talked about on the fans we haven't talked about in a while, but uh, who whose quality comments and spot on observations are very key, and that's one Bernie Deal. So I'm going to uh, take one from last night's thread. Uh, Kuzi needs to be also needs to be stronger in the crease and take stick of Wagner. Don't let him get puck with stick. Uh, and so he what he's talking about, of course, was the fact that Kuzi was on the ice for Wagner's second goal, which made things a little too close for comfort towards the end. So as good as Kuzi was, Bernie saying that, hey, hey guess what? Uh, you need to be good on the other end of the ice too. Agreed. And that was, that was actually a, um, a, uh, a response to a post that uh, Ron Schrantz put out. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, we're, you and I aren't the only ones uh, PO'd about the state of the officiating in the NHL here. He says, he goes on to say uh, and this, we of course, uh, Another comment by Ron Schrantz, who basically, uh, well, that was a non-BS call, a BS non-call, rather. Um, It's an absolutely abysmal disgrace. One period they call every little nitpick. The next period, it's mall ball. Only penalty was obvious hold on Backstrom. That one took about five seconds before it was called. Uh, Yeah, and uh, basically he's, he's not saying anything that hasn't already been said, that he hasn't already said, uh, that the officiating has just been all the way across the board, uh, a a a uh, series of uh, animal feces droppings uh, on your on the worst possible place, <sighs> and yeah, Wait, I, what, what what's the worst possible place? Um, you you name it uh, in your shoes on your breakfast plate. Um, Oh, uh, on in, my in, face or something in your car. <laughs> well, the, I wasn't I wasn't going to go there. This is a family show. Right. Oh. Whatever, whatever, uh, whatever um, floats your boat there, you know. Yeah, no, that it doesn't float my boat. Don't worry. But when you see like the worst possible, like, uh, yeah, ew. All right, and I, I wouldn't want to think of why it would ever be on my plate. But 
Yeah, All right, well, anyhow, I got totally distracted. But yes, Bernie Deal kicks ass. Yes, he I does. I appreciate that... his his comment. And 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 you know what I, I will say? There are, uh, he is very quick to to respond to um Facebook posts and 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 you know bring his knowledge to the table. But I appreciate the fact that he's he's never a jerk about it. You know, he uh, there have been times that I have said things that he has absolutely looked at and been like what the fuck are you thinking and but have but no berating no degrading nothing just you know here are the facts kind of thing and i appreciate that and so i hope him and his it's his brother right ron yes yeah i hope you know they just they just keep doing what they're doing because i i think there is you know they they definitely put it out there uh in all caps no pun intended and uh, you know, you can feel their um, love for the team for sure. So I, I think that that's that's awesome. Yes, and I've, as I've said many times, you uh, definite passion for the team, for the game, for the right way that this ought to be played. But like you said, also uh, very gentlemanly in the in you know in their treatment of fellow fans. So if if you want to see how to be a Caps fan the right way now as i've said many many times follow his comments so i'm going to throw in one last one that he threw uh in uh courtesy of last night's game and this of course uh is a this uh is a comment on the team in general uh lots of discipline issues with this team lots of lazy puck watching in center ice on the first goal and near miss on that one too many stick penalties instead of playing d with their legs first power play point guys power play point uh, guys staying way too long on PP. Uh, that's That's been a complaint of his for a long time. The unit staying far too long for the whole two minutes in some cases. Uh, but I digress. Uh, Ovi and Carlson need to get their asses off by 30 seconds to go. Mark, in, unless in zone, truth be told, should be two five-man units. I totally agree. You do not want your power play units being gassed. But Unfortunately, that that's what they're doing. So you want to keep the fresh legs out at all times because, as I've said in the past, you you're up against four guys who have to cover the same ground. Sooner or later, they're going to get tired. Okay, you as a power play unit, you have to let the puck do the moving. The guys following you on the PK have to move with their legs. Sooner or later, they're going to get tired. Speed is always key, but if you can't keep up with the puck movement, sooner or later, you're going to dumb yourself out of position. Mm -hmm. and that, that's the key. And if you have the fresher legs, you have the better chance of doing that. But that's, that's just it. They're not, they're not doing it. So simple fine-tuning by the coaching staff here uh, will, will go a long way. And that's, that's uh, one of Bernie's longstanding points. So uh, spot on as always. So we will leave it at that. Like I said, hopefully we'll make this a regular part of all of our episodes. That's uh, observations and comments during the games uh, or in general. Uh, and that I'm, I'm are, waiting. Are you going to call it like the real deal? Uh, well, that, see, see that, that's, that's the funny thing. If it were just Bernie, yeah, I, I think I would do something like that. But uh, I want to open it up to all of our listeners who leave comments. Oh, okay. So, uh, but right. uh, Bernie for sure will will certainly be highlighted because because Bernie. Yeah, I agree. So, all right, cool. uh, okay. So we, so, all right, go ahead. Sorry. Totally well, I, okay. So that that sorry, no, that that's fine. So that's that. Uh, and we, of course, wrap up the home game stand. So the uh, here's the damage: uh, six games played, four wins in regulation, one overtime loss. <laughs> the fucking loser point uh, as a result of uh, number 10's uh, ill time penalty. Thank you so much, BC. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you. No, but, it, uh, did, it did suck. It did suck. It, trust me. Yeah, so. it sucked it donkey was, balls. Yeah, I don't know about that, but yeah. Um, and one regulation loss, as we mentioned, uh, because uh, Tuka Dump, uh, Tuka Rask, rather, uh, stood on his head. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was actually that was actually a, 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 I was in a, I was in a fantasy hockey league for one year. That was actually some guy's handle name. So Tuka Dump. Yeah, that's so great. That you laugh at. That that gets a laugh out of you. 
That's so great. All yeah. All the jokes I throw out, and that's what gets a laugh out of you. <laughs> that was a good one. I need oh, to find you, that guy. <laughs> you are like, you are like, oh, you're, you're, you're like a clone of Mrs. Blue Liner. That you laugh at. A well, throwaway yeah. comment out of the blue you laugh at. Yeah, well, hey. you know, got to keep you on your toes. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, uh, speaking of fans who, uh, make comments that keep us on our toes and, uh, make yeah. other great observations, want to give a shout out at this point to Faye McKinnon, uh, who hails all the way from Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, okay. she is a dedicated Caps fan, always chimes in with a good comment. Um, I hope I'm not, uh, 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 doing, uh, an injustice here. I, I don't know if she doesn't want the attention but uh you can follow her at purple fi at well spell purple fi her name is spelled f i but it's pronounced fay so it's purple f i uh at purple f i on twitter uh you're a caps fan uh well worth the follow well worth the comment uh Absolutely. and i mentioned her i mentioned her because uh, we're going to do previews of coming attractions before we close with don mclaren's farm report <clears throat> pardon me um so the um, okay, okay. What? Uh, why? Why did you send me a text of? <laughs> oh my good! Why did you? Because uh, because I okay. teach fifth grade boys, and this Ladies is the stuff I have to deal with. <laughs> Anna has decided to throw out the ultimate distraction by texting me oh god it's so good i've got hey. so many but that just tells you where my head is tonight because i yeah I have a, go ahead, you i don't know if you can i don't know if it'll do justice <laughs> oh good lord anna has decided to totally derail the show by sending me a photoshop text that says when you gamble on a fart and lose <laughs> and the picture that captions a picture of uh, a, a keebler elf uh, keebler elf um <laughs> with the uh, <laughs> uh, the white fudge stripes which of course I, I think might be a veiled reference to your favorite band um, but it says whoopsie on the package, uh, over top of the fudge stripes. <laughs> You're not doing I didn't even, it I didn't even, I didn't even read the freaking caption and, and that the whoopsie was, yeah, that's, that's. I'll post it on the Facebook page tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Because, uh, the, the, the listeners aren't going to understand, but yeah, the post, post the whole freaking thing with the caption and all that. Ugly. Oh boy. You missed uh, me. I, Faye, Faye, I'm so sorry. This is not how <laughs> well here's the thing. So so yes, side sidebar from the fart jokes, because again, <laughs> I teach fifth grade boys. It's what I it's what I have to listen to all day long. And sometimes I have to discipline with a straight face when they do something, and I'm like, I'm gonna puke if you make my room smell like this again. And then I burst out laughing because it's because it is what it is. Um, but with Faye, I, we talked about, um, well, you and I spoke about doing an all-female uh, show, hopefully mm -hmm. sometime in March. And what? she is absolutely one that I want to have on. And I'm, I'm super excited. And she said in her response, which I thought was adorable, she's like, but don't you guys have interesting people on? I'm like, no, Gil and I are interesting and we have the podcast. Uh, kidding. Uh, uh, um, let me stop you there. Well, I, I, <laughs> we are very interesting people. Uh, case in point, this uh, lovely uh, flatulence uh, joke that we put out times. there for, for the entertainment of our listeners. I say hey, we would laugh at stuff like that. I'm going to post one them. aspect of how we are very interesting and entertaining, <laughs> might I say. So, no, uh, so yes, but you, I know, I know you wanted to talk about this because I do have like two things I want to talk about and then I'm, I'm ready for dinner. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So, uh, right. So uh, let me, let me just get out the, the previews of coming attractions and then, yes, I, I almost forgot to, you were at a, a, a particular event, but before yes. we get to that, we're going to do the uh, previews, uh, as I said. Uh, so uh, next month is uh, women's history month. 
So as we just mentioned, we're looking to do an all-female call-in show. And uh, Faye, if you're listening, um, do please uh, consider uh, calling in if you can. Um, I know it's going to be long distance and uh, very much a pain for you, but we would dearly, dearly love to have you on and hear your opinions. Uh, yes, as, and as I responded to you in that very same tweet, um, you are a passionate fan. You're a knowledgeable fan. So, yes, of course, we want to hear from you. Absolutely. Uh, it matter, matters not how insignificant you feel. You are not insignif- insignificant in our eyes because you are a Caps fan. And as I've said a million times, we make the Caps fan the star here. Um, but uh, also, of course, we're still in the middle of uh, February, which is Black History Month. And so uh, I would like to have at least one African-American fan. I've uh, spoken to a particular gentleman uh, who I've conversed with uh, several times in, the, in both our Facebook room and Facebook in general and on Sports on the Hill. Uh, and so I'm looking to have him on. I won't name him just yet, but uh, we're looking to have him on either next week or the week after. Probably going to do the last week of, uh, of uh, February for that show. So that's previews of coming attractions there. Uh, so that you know what to expect. So, uh, okay, so we're going to close with the farm report from Don McLaren. But if, but first, Anna, I understand you attended a very special charity event. I did. I did. So, uh, why don't you, you, yes. you tell us about that? Fart jokes aside, I, I do have a serious side, kind of, and a big heart. Um, so dreams a big for what? kids. Heart. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyways, it is a family show, Gail, as you keep Mm -hmm. reminding me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dreams for Kids DC, an amazing organization that gives um, children and adults with disabilities an opportunity to, you know, just have a have a day of um, of fun. And they do this with the Redskins. And we had an opportunity to volunteer. Ian and myself did it um, on Friday at MedStar. And I couldn't say enough amazing things about all of the volunteers um, and all of the, the, the parents and the participants that came out to skate um, just, just to see the smiles on these children's faces, some who are wheelchair bound and then were put like on a sled and pushed around the ice, which was phenomenal to see Um, others. um, Since I, I don't skate gracefully, um, Ian does. So he was uh, assigned to actually three kids. They were all siblings, but the eldest daughter uh, was 20. Her name was Jessica and she has down syndrome and she had never been on skates before. And so he was out there and, you know, the moms, she has two moms, moms were uh, concerned that, you know, she was going to be just this hot mess. And I said, you know, my husband is, he's going to rock it. Like he, he's, (laughs) he puts up with me on the ice. So he's, (laughs) and, and sure enough, Jessica could, her smile infectious for the whole 90 minutes on the ice um, it was it was just a very cool event, and and I will say that it was nice to see, you know the 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 volunteers out there who you know you're with a, a a kiddo that you don't know you have you have pizza before you go on the ice and you're watching the caps practice, and then you have 90 minutes on the ice, and the parents are just in this in the stands, and to see them have an opportunity to talk with each other and meet each other and see how happy their child is and, you know, kind of giving them that, like that 90 minute break of not having to be on the ice with them and letting them do something was truly just heartwarming. So, um, so on a caps end, they had four players that came out. Uh, you had Eller, um, Dowd, Connolly and Boyd. And I can't say enough amazing things about these four, these four players. Uh, at one point, um, Nick Dowd went to a player who was in a sled and sat down on the ice to take pictures with him and to talk to him. Um, at one point, you had Tiger taking a, a player around um, on a sled at 
at, at faster speeds. Um, and, you know, and this kid was just laughing and Brett Connolly, um, Ian had a chance to, to take a photo with him and said, you know, he could not have been nicer. Um, and Travis Boyd, I mean, so it was, it was really one of those moments of um, us wanting to do something and, and I, I absolutely loved every part of it. I didn't need to get anything out of it other than seeing, you know, the, these kids smile. Um, but to see these players come out and there wasn't, I don't think there was one person on the ice that didn't have their, oh, it's slap shot was there too. Um, that didn't have their picture taken, that the players didn't talk to and give their undivided attention to. So how can you not just love this team that much more? So I highly recommend Dreams for Kids DC. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, as, as I always say, uh, yet another reason to put your love in this team because they do things like this for the community. They do. So and they're, not, they're not just a sports team. They're part of the community. They're part of uh, the, the DMV family of things. Yes. And so, and my last thing is, and I, I know you and I didn't talk about this, but I, but I did reach out to, to Brian Bingham um, when you were talking before, because I wanted to ask about Heather and how the chemo is going with her breast cancer. So I'm just going to read this really quick and then farm report and we're good. Is that okay? I think so. Yes. Okay. So he said, other than the tumor being gone, which is great. Um, awesome. Like how awesome is that? Uh, she has nine more treatments to go and uh, things are going well. The best news is that the tumor is nowhere to be found. She feels worn down a lot and a bunch of small side effects, which sucks for her. But overall, um, uh, things are progressing good, and thanks for your support. So, Heather, keep kicking ass, girl. I love it. I see your pictures and chemo. I wish I could be there to, uh, to sit with you during those treatments and, and keep you uh, preoccupied. But you know what? We couldn't have uh, been more excited to hear this, this great news. So keep rocking it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great, great news. Great, great to hear um, as, as far as uh, Heather's recovery is concerned. And that, that's, of course, Heather Bingham, um, wife of uh, Caps fan Brian Bingham, who we spoke about a few weeks ago. And that's her kicking cancer's ass and putting it in its place. So absolutely wonderful to hear, hear that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it a bit because I'm thinking of, of, of absent friends and relatives, uh, that, that cancer has taken. Um, so very glad to hear and see someone who is returning the favor, given cancer receipt and, and, and getting by. So I know Heather, uh, if you're listening, I know that you'll get those, get through those nine treatments and, uh, and come out of this better than ever. So that, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, wow. That's, that's, that's great to hear. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to control myself here, but like I said, you know, brings, brings back a few memories. Um, but I'm, I'm, I am truly glad that she's getting past it. So, uh, okay. So, um, all right. Now on to the last segment. And that of course is the, uh, farm report from our chocolate soldiers up in Hershey. Uh, we'll try to get through this, uh, as quickly as we can. We do have three weeks to cover, but suffice it to say it is worth talking about because Z Bears are on a hot streak. So here we go, starting with the games from week 17. Bears at Lehigh Valley, 2 1 shoot a loss, but Samsonov stops 25. The next Saturday, Bears at the Laval Rocket, uh, that's Canadians farm team, 4 2 win. Vanacek and goal for that one. Uh, 2 2 19, Bears at Lehigh Valley. 2-1 win. Walker and Sproul scoring. Uh, Bears at the Belleville Centers. 3-2 shootout win. Vanacek and goal for that one. 2-6-19. Bears at the Thunderbirds. That's Florida's team. Uh, Barber, O'Brien, Whitney, and Pilon. Samsonov with 35 saves. That's a career high. Okay, getting back to this week. Bears at the Charlotte Checkers. That's a Hurricanes affiliate. 3-2 shootout win. Stop me if you've heard this before. Uh, certain someone uh, we just, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to talk about in a second, or we already did sort of. 
on the on the score sheet for that one. And of course, the most recent Sunday uh, again against the Checkers, two one win. Meg Nunn Barber with the goal. Samson off stopping twenty nine, outstanding in their field. The sites Riley Barber, Scarbosa again having another good week. Ryan Sproul on the defense uh, praises both goalies. Uh, playing exceptional well and uh, exceptionally well, that is, and uh, uh, benefiting from overall good team defense. Bears aren't currently on a uh, 12 game point streak, streak, uh, six game winning streak, and only a couple points out of fourth in the division, which puts them well within striking distance of a playoff spot in the AHL in the race for the Calder Cup. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too fast. For all you fans of the Chocolate Soldiers, the Hershey Bars. And uh, so I think that'll wrap it up for this edition of the Power Play Point podcast. So we're going to put it out there. Oh, so yes, uh, before I get to uh, my end here, of course, wanted to do a reminder. Anyways, of course, uh, Jonas Siegenthaler uh, being sent back down to Hershey and being a part of that uh, great team defense. So uh, hopefully he got his seasoning. But I just want to close the show and remind you that there is an advantage of living in Switzerland. Speaking of Jonas Siegenthaler. The flag they have is a big plus. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> You're such an ass. Well, and hey, I just want to throw out there to all listeners, whatnot, have an amazing Valentine's Day on Thursday. Yes, to uh, yeah. all our uh, lovers Stupid and losers. holiday, but that's okay. And and Gil, on Monday, we will be talking about your 45th birthday that comes up on Sunday. Uh, yeah, love we me. will. Uh-huh. You love me, love me. Yeah, All right. and as I, as I always say, uh, and if you can't get enough of Anna, and who can't, you can catch her on Sports on the Hill podcast uh, that Monday as well. Good times. Hallelujah, and let's go Caps. Go Caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point podcast. All episodes are available from Apple Podcasts, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister. Voice over by Jeffrey Conkle. We did run long, so uh, there is that. I know. So. That's what she said. <laughs>